Hey guys, I want to give a quick disclaimer. We're going to be talking about some things that have to do with health and just long-term health, medical stuff, etc. I am by no means a medical doctor. I am not the sharpest tool in the shed, and nor could I ever go through that schooling. But if you guys have questions, concerns, make sure you contact your medical provider to figure out the best possible future plan for you with things that we talk about in this video. What's up guys, Coach Show here at the Lions Den, located in Colmar, PA, and this is another episode of Zat Chats. And this episode is a little bit morbid, honestly, um, but once again, these conversations are just things that are in my brain, gives you a different take on the content. You know, when I talk to Sebastian, we have these ideas or he's like, yo, like we should talk about that. I think people enjoy that. So. That's what we're gonna do. And today we are gonna talk about death, starting off on a very positive note. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys have heard uh, the term memento mori. Basically the whole point of memento mori is knowing that death is inevitable, okay? We are guaranteed two things in life. The first one is death, the second thing is taxes. Unless you're not paying your taxes, you're just a scumbag. No, I'm kidding. I'm just jealous. I'm just very jealous that you don't pay your taxes and get away with it because my taxes suck. Back, to, back on track here. Memento mori, okay? Death is inevitable. We are guaranteed it, right? From the moment we are born, we don't know when, but we will inevitably die. And this is kind of timely for me, right? I just turned 30, and, and for those of you who, whatever age you are, like, 30 for me uh, has been a little bit of a wake-up call. Obviously, it's still young, and I know some of the older guys in the channel are like, well, you're 30, blah, blah, blah. Like, I get it, bro. I get it. But at the same time, it's been like a red flag for me to really start prioritizing things in my life that maybe I wouldn't have prioritized before. Hence, thinking really hard about my future and what I want the future direction and where I want it to go. And in your 20s, you kind of feel invincible. And for the most part, you kind of are, right? Everything's going great. Uh, you can get away with things that maybe wouldn't affect you as much as they would when you're 30 and so on. Uh, but the main premise of this is I want to talk about my challenge coins right here. So the, the coins you're seeing on the screen are termed the Four Horsemen. And I got these a little bit ago uh, from a company called Ironsmith. So if you guys like challenge coins, you can feel free to get them. And they're the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Okay, so I'll read them. Uh, we have war, we have death, we have famine, and we have conquest. And I find these cool uh, because they're just symbolic right, of the apocalypse, the end, the inevitable end or death. But what I want to talk about is more the deeper meaning that I've had with these. So I got these a few months ago, and then I, since I've had this epiphany of long-term health, where I want my life to go, you know, focusing on different goals, which is longevity, I started reading this book, and it was called Outlive by Peter Atia. Now, maybe you follow him, maybe you don't. I feel like for the most part, he puts out really good content. He's been on big podcasts like Joe Rogan, uh, Huberman Lab podcasts, etc. And he's kind of blown up. And I found it weird. I actually got chills because when I was reading it, he talks about the four horsemen of death. And he equates them with inevitable disease that will eventually kill us at some point in our life. And what those are going to be is heart disease, cancer, neurodegenerative disease, such as Alzheimer's, th those types of things, and then diabetes. So when we categorize death, usually it comes from one of those four horsemen. And I was like, dang, like I got these coins, he's talking about the four horsemen of death. And then I started really thinking like, out of those four, which one am I most worried about dying from? And I haven't really talked about this much on video, uh, but when I was a teenager and I was playing uh, lacrosse, I was on this premier club team, right, where we, they take like some of the best kids in the, in the area, they put them on a team, and then they go and play against all the other best teams in the States, and they call it the Keystone State Games. And I believe I was 14 years old when I got on this team. It was a big opportunity for me, because I only been playing lacrosse for like one or two years when I got this opportunity, and I just wanted to rise to the occasion. Well, anyway, we're, we're practicing really hard in the summer, and uh, they were just grueling practices, the heat was unbearable, but we were just trying to push and push and push to get ready for this competition, playing with a bunch of new players, getting that camaraderie down. If you've been on a club or a premier team, you know how it works, right? And one of these practices, I remember it must have been, you know, in the 90s or even 100, depending on the humidity or what it felt like, et cetera. And I'm playing my heart out, literally, and I start feeling like my heart uh, beat just kind of changed. And basically, if I would create like an RPM meter, or like a gauge on your dashboard, it was like, constantly 
on the, the far end, like I was just putting my RPM to the max and it wouldn't come down from there. Now, something weird had happened. I didn't necessarily like black out, but I kind of quote unquote like collapsed on the field. And one of the weird embarrassing parts about it was I actually like pissed myself. And I remember like that was weird. Like I had, I lost control of my bladder and the coaches kind of were talking to me, you know, wanted me to stay hydrated, you know, thought like maybe it was heat stroke or something like that. So sat out the rest of that practice. This then led to me going and talking to my parents about it. My parents were obviously concerned. I'm their son. They want to make sure I'm okay. And then I started getting testing. So as I was getting testing, uh, it went from like one thing to the next. So they first diagnosed it as heat stroke, but then with heat stroke, they want to make sure my heart was okay. So I got an EKG and then they saw something weird on the EKG and it had to do with my QT interval of my heart. So they then sent me to CHOP and honestly going to CHOP was a really eye-opening experience and CHOP is Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And that's pretty much where they put really extreme cases of things that have to do with kids, right? It could be cancer, it could be anything with their heart or their brain. Being a 14 year old having to go to CHOP seeing kids being wheeled around who are basically terminally ill with cancer or some sort of heart disease was really shocking to me, right? And it put a lot of things into perspective and I won't lie, like I was scared. Uh, so they put me on a stress test and when they put me on the stress test, they're basically trying to push you as hard as you can go and you're hooked up to all these different monitors and they're trying to see what happens with your body as you're going through the stress test. And this first one I did was on a bike and when I was doing it on the bike, I was going as hard as I could. And next to me, there was another kid doing it on a bike. Now, as I'm getting towards the end of it, this other kid uh, basically goes into a full on like arrhythmia with his heart and they rip him off the bike. They put him on this table. They basically have to use the paddles and like jump him back. And you can imagine like you're trying to do this test. This is going on next to you. It's just a lot for a 14 year old to handle. And I was just, like I said, I was just scared. I, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Obviously I'm there for a reason, so they're, they're probably looking for something where I else I wouldn't be there. So throughout this, what they diagnosed me with was long QT syndrome. So basically it's with the QT interval uh, and it can be a scary thing. You can look it up where basically it kills kids and, it, and exercise as like a blessing and a curse, right? You need exercise to help build and strengthen your heart. At the same time, when you push your heart to a certain level, it could potentially go into uh, this problem with the QT interval and it could kill you. So being a 14 year old, having to hear all this, my parents hear all this, it, it was just very traumatic. Uh, and I remember being 14 years old and I thought about what I wanted my gravestone to look like. And this is like super morbid things, you know, a 14 year old probably is going to be processing. But I remember if I was gonna die, I wanted to go all in on life. So I actually decided to continue to play sports, being monitored, and in my area at the time, the high schools actually didn't have AED devices. This is, you know, 16 years ago. And for whatever reason, my school district didn't have AEDs available on the field. So it was pretty cool to be responsible for one of the people that started getting AEDs more uh, put into these schools and being a high school coach now we actually have procedures where we go over using AEDs and how we use them uh, because there has been an increase of, of heart problems uh, within sports and specifically in lacrosse we've had kids who get a shot to the chest they drop dead uh, AEDs can save their life or be the reason that it's a, a living situation versus a death so that's kind of the backstory now moving forward I always continue my testing with this and back when I was in my early 20s, I went and got the stress test redone. They took all the different measurements and the QT interval was no longer an issue. So I was like super pumped because all my, my whole life I've been monitored for this. I was on a beta blocker for my heart. And then to get that relief of it's no longer an issue was, was really awesome for me. Um, now, with that being said, they, they thought that during puberty, since your hormones are all over the place and you're growing and there's just a lot of change, that was what was flaring up this issue of this long QT interval. So for whatever the reason is, it, it, like I said, it popped up and it wasn't much of an issue. So life continued on. Now, as I've gotten older, when I look at these coins and I, I see the different diseases that, that kill people, uh, I think for me, if I do go with one of them, it's gonna be my heart. Okay, just from previous history, uh, from also getting blood work done, you know, I'm a strength sport athlete. 
I push myself to extremes and extremes I mean the sense of just really pushing hard to be a top level competitor in whatever I do but then also there is the factor of supplementation and I'm just putting it out there when it comes to supplementation I haven't been on anything in six to eight months uh, because I wanted to basically clear out my system I want to get really good blood work I've been dialing in my nutrition because throughout my blood work and other metrics that they measure right I started seeing my blood pressure creep up and things like that which just go back to the main point of cardiovascular health being a main concern for me. And one of the things I really like that Peter Atia says is, we will die with either one or all of these, right, at some point, but that doesn't necessarily mean we need to die from it. And that really hit home with me, right, with these four horsemen. So I kind of pose a question to you guys is, if you look at these coins, which one do you think is gonna be the one that could potentially be fatal to you? And in his book, he talks about ways that we can prevent them as much as possible. He talks about uh, lifespan and health span, right? Lifespan is gonna be from the day you're born to the day you die. Say it's 80 years, well, your lifespan was 80 years. But your health span is how well and how healthy you are during that lifespan. So kind of what we've seen, or maybe you guys know, is say you have grandparents that died in their 80s but their health really deteriorated in their 60s. Well, they, they lived, yes, at 20 extra years, but their quality of life was so poor that honestly, maybe they wouldn't even want to have lived those 20 years because of how poor their quality of life was. Or maybe you know where a parent or relative or you've watched them for 20 years just suffer. So the main premise of this book is to increase that health span during our lifespan, if that makes sense. So I've been really taking this to heart, uh, no pun intended, with what can I do? So if you've been following me on Instagram, I've been doing a lot more cardio, okay? Making sure that I'm keeping my heart as healthy as possible. I've really cleaned up my diet and my nutrition. You know, I made sure that I'm training to the best of my ability and structuring everything right. So that, yeah, it's, it's 30 now, but when things pop up, when you're in your 50s or 60s, say you have a heart attack, I'm, I, I don't know the exact data, but I'm pretty sure if you have a heart attack after age 50, it's a 50-50 chance that that heart attack will kill you. And if it doesn't kill you, it's already at a point where they need to take huge medical interventions to try to prolong your life as much as possible. So I wanna start now. Like now is the time for me to start so that I can measure and check things appropriately over the years so if there are red flags that pop up, they're much more easily managed to keep me around for the long haul, right? And, and Peter goes in, into each of these horsemen and examples of things that you can do to prevent them as much as possible. Now, obviously huge staples, right? It's gonna be exercise, nutrition, sleep. Uh, he also talks about emotional health, okay? It's, it's very holistic, but then there are also very, very specific measures that you can take and things to look for when you get those measures done. Like for me, it's like gonna be blood pressure. It's gonna be when I get my blood work done, looking for a certain data in that blood work that maybe isn't normally tested when you go to the doctor, but you can, either outsource it to another company or specifically ask your doctor for things to look for. Uh, so for me, like I said, out of these four horsemen, it's gonna be cardiovascular health is a big one for me. Uh, I don't really have a high thing with cancer in my family. Obviously, if you continue to live on for forever, cancer will develop. Um, but I, I would say right now, if it's one of those things that are gonna kill me, it's gonna be my, my ticker that goes. And one of the other big things I need to work on is stress management. Right? I am a very stressed individual. That increases my blood pressure. Long-term chronic stress, I really do believe will kill you for whatever the reason. I'm sure there's data to support it, but in my gut, and it, I feel like stress is just something we need to manage, especially today's world we live in with the lifestyles that we have. They're very high stress jobs, high stress lifestyles, and they need to be managed to the best of our ability. So I just wanted to talk about that. You guys can take it for whatever it's worth. I just know that being 30 years old, you know, and, and seeing other people in my life with how they've aged or the health problems that they've had, I'm gonna be way more cognizant and aware of it so I can manage it to live the longest and healthiest life uh, possible. And I'm gonna take control, right? I'm gonna get the bull by the horns, essentially, to do that. And, you know, if you guys are watching this, maybe you wanna comment down with what do you think your, your horseman is gonna be that you don't want to die from, but you will die with, right? Uh, and put down there ways that you are trying to prevent that as much as possible. So 
a little bit of a long-winded video, uh, but these coins mean a lot to me. I really recommend you guys read that book, Outlive by Peter Atia. I think there's a lot of great nuggets in there, and you can start using them to uh, optimize your, your life, your health, and be around for the long haul. So just some food for thought. I know it's a little bit down, a little depressing. At the same time, it should motivate you. Like I feel inspired now because I choose my actions wisely and it motivates me more than hell uh, to go do my cardio or to say no to certain things that I know are gonna hurt me down the long run. Now, all this to say, you want to still be you know, an individual that enjoys life but I think there's a way that you can find a balance uh, to do both while optimizing your health and longevity and still be a normal human being. It doesn't have to be like you cut away and go extreme with certain things. Um, and at the same time, we want to do it now so we don't have to be extreme later, right? Because if, if we're in our 60s or our 50s when these things arise, it's a lot more challenging to, to manage them. So that's my coin set. And hopefully you found some value in this. Maybe get the conversation started down below. And uh, that's all I got for, for this Zat Chat, guys. You know, So let's, let's get after it. Let's increase our health span. You know, let's be a little bit more cognizant and aware of the things going on in our life, how we can manage it now, and, and just keep crushing life. So if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, follow Sebastian. And I just appreciate all your support. And my goal is to be around for the long haul. So hopefully I'll be making these videos and updating you guys as I go throughout time. Thanks. Stay with me, Train Machine. Catch you guys next time. Peace.